We're going to give an interesting talk here now about self-driving cars or autonomous vehicles. Now the press is really pushing this and so are the car manufacturers. But there's some things that a lot of people don't seem to want to grasp right now or just aren't talking about. This presentation will be funny, scary, but awfully thought-provoking. So, it's kind of a big topic. I want to cover the things that, first of all, the basics are. The reason they're promoting it so much, one of the reasons is that they tout it as being safer. Safer on the roads, uh, safer, less deaths. 90% of our traffic accidents generally are, are attributed to human error. If you don't have a human to produce the error, less traffic deaths. Good thing, right? Uh, insurance rates, they say, will go down for uh, fully autonomous vehicles. Um, you'll have less fatigue, less road rage, uh, they could be more efficient, could have less cars on the road, by ride sharing and things. Um, there's a lot of things that they say are going to be benefits for these uh, driverless cars. Well, and convenience. Let's, let's uh, take some scenarios here. Real life things that will happen, that we will have to face in this future, that is coming. In fact, here's the thing, a lot of you may not know this here in 2018, it's already here. Yes, it's already here. Fully autonomous vehicles are already here. Uh, some areas may or may not allow them. We're talking about the United States here now, but UK has also given the green light to fully automatic cars. Uh, basically, all around the world, this is happening. Now, here in the States, and we're referring mostly to the United States here, for those of you watching in the United States. Um, 33 states or so at this taping have approved some sort of autonomous vehicle legislation or considering it. Right now, the federal government is also trying to get in the game to try to have something more uniform instead of all these states having passed. But, but as of this taping, basically, California and Michigan both have the legislation enacted to enable fully automatic cars, even without steering wheels or gas pedals, brake pedals, etc. That legislation is already there, and it's growing and growing. Michigan is a logical one because that's the, the cars, right? Motor City, right? Well... This is going to be interesting, and it's going to be really scary, I think. I don't, I'm hoping we don't see this, but I, I, I know that's not true. We're going to see it. It's already here. You right now, believe it or not, you might be going down the road and see somebody even asleep at their car, on the road, maybe even in the back seat. It's already here. It's just you don't see it widespread anymore because right now these vehicles are a little bit more expensive, a lot more expensive, but they're going to be coming cheaper. They say by the year 20, let me see, by 2025... It will add only seven thousand dollars to the price of a car, and by 2035, it'll add about three thousand dollars to the price of the car. Now, that's to me, that's a whole lot, and I'm never going to be able to afford them. But at some point, they're going to have to make drivable, drivable cars illegal. Stick with me on that. I'm going to go. I'm going to go through that. The reasons for that. We have not seen a change in this our sort of transportation system since we went to automobiles from horse and buggy. This is literally going to be that much of a drastic change, in my opinion. This is all just opinion here. But bear with me. All right, let's see here. Think about this. Okay, it's extremely convenient, right? A drive, if in Michigan and California, they literally have passed legislation that you can, there doesn't have to be anybody in the car at all. Literally, a car could be going down the road by itself. They have that legislation enacted already. By itself. That means, okay, that's really convenient. Boy, I'm a stay-at-home mom. Got to pick up the kids from school. Eh, I'll just send the car to go get them. The car goes to the school, sits there, waits in line with all the other robot cars, and the kid comes up, the junior punches the code in the, in the key lock, comes in the, gets in the car and say, okay, home, Hal. The car takes the kid home. Convenient, right? Pick up groceries or something from disabled people, great. Send your car off to the Walmart. They already have a system in place where you just come pick up your stuff. They just take the stuff, put it in your car, and, and take it back home for you. By itself. Wow, super convenient. There's a lot of scenarios. A whole lot of scenarios you can come up with that really would be seem like a good thing. However, there's a whole lot of things that can go wrong, if you can imagine. These cars, I, I've had cars, I've, I've only had three cars in my lifetime in the last 10, 15 years that have been computer controlled. And I've always had problems with those computers and they didn't drive the car. They just had the idiot lights to stay on or tell me I need to change an oxygen sensor erroneously or whatever. I take my car in the mechanic to get it fixed. 
They change the sensor, the light doesn't go away. Well, I don't know. Or something's wrong with the car and they plug it into the computer to let the computer tell them what, the, what it needs to be done. And okay, it needs to say, change this, change this, change this. I spent $800 once changing several things on, and it still never fixed the problem. They just scratched ahead and sent me to somewhere else. Because they didn't fix the problem. Computer is an error. Use your mind as a mechanic and try to fix the damn car. Figure out what's going on and ignore the damn computer. Every single car I've ever had, and I can't buy new cars, I just don't have the money. Basically, every single car I've ever had, or van or whatever, that was computerized, always had a problem with the computer. Now we're talking about putting an almost completely computerized car on the road. Literally completely computerized car on the road. Oh, it's not like computers ever crash or anything, right? You might be sitting there right, ready to go to work in your car, and you go to start, try to start your car until you want to go somewhere, and the car is updating. Can't get on the internet, it's updating. How many times did you wait for a computer to update before you can get online or doing something like that? Car is updating, you're sitting there forever, you're going to late for work. I've had computers take half an hour sometimes to update. Don't turn off your computer until we get done updating your computer. Okay, scenarios there. A lot of scenarios. Okay, now that's not dangerous. Well, now we already have had some wrecks, crashes, and including fatality with autonomous vehicles. Usually, they are a human error, either from another human error car or from the human that's inside the car. That's usually the case, granted. Uh, they, they can be safer. I, I don't argue with that. Um, but there has been a fatality. Tesla, one of the leaders in this market, this, this uh, market of uh, autonomous vehicles, which has a level five capable one now, and their level three ones are on the road as I speak. There's different levels from zero to five. Six different levels, five being fully autonomous without even a person having to do anything. Uh, but right now they can sit there and change lanes, just put the turn signal on, and the lane will change by itself. Accelerate, deaccelerate, brake if something comes in the way, and steer the car. They can just sit back and watch the car do all the work. Okay? But most of the legislation right now is requiring a person to be there behind the wheel to take over in case something happens. That's changing. In fact, General Motors at the uh, auto show here a couple months ago actually displayed a fully autonomous vehicle that they plan to introduce in 2019. Fully autonomous and as you see, no steering wheel, no brake pedals, no gas pedals. Fully autonomous without any human intervention whatsoever. In fact, not even capable of having human intervention. Interesting, huh? Are we ready for this? And Ford has the same thing planned, at least their current plans, by 2021. Not much longer. And so many other companies, Volvo, Mercedes, they're all doing it. They're all jumping on the bandwagon to try to produce these fully autonomous vehicles. Well, what about things? There, there's so many things. And, and this is, this is going to be real, it's going to be an amazing point in our history of mankind. Now, imagine some of the problems here. And I'm going to throw a bunch of them at you. And these, and these are hypothetical, but these will happen. And they'll happen with pretty regular frequency when things get going. Well, for instance, let's say, uh, oh, and the Tesla accident, by the way, I, I, I almost missed that. The Tesla accident, the car, the, there was a semi truck, a white semi truck turning in front of the, making a left turn in front of a Tesla coming in the other direction. And the Tesla basically ran right under the semi, underneath the trailer, took off the top of the car, killed the occupant, and uh, the results, as you see here, uh, 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 on out, and, the, and it was blamed on the car. Uh, the car apparently had seven or nine seconds or something to respond, and it just plain didn't. The way they determined the accident, the, the root cause of the accident, as far as the car was concerned, was brightly lit sky, white semi trailer. It basically didn't see it against the brightly lit white sky. Now there's other technologies, there's radar technologies, and there's, there's sonar technologies, and there's laser technologies that they can employ. They, they can overcome these problems. So, but in any case, we already have had deaths due to it. But how many deaths do we have every day due to human-occupied ones? They can potentially be safe. Okay, again, I'm not arguing that point. But let's say your car, there's an ethics issue. Ethics, let's say there's a crowd there and all of a sudden they appear that the car didn't see before or for some reason people run, a bunch of joggers run across the road and the car doesn't have time to stop. But yet over on the sidewalk there, there's a, a mother and her baby 
you're going to have to hit one of them. The car is going to have to decide which one to hit. Which is it going to be? Ethical questions, you see. Do you kill a bunch of joggers, a bunch of adult joggers, or you kill the mother and her chi baby child? Ethical problems. Setting that aside, that's, that's a, a scenario that very likely wouldn't happen to most any of us during our entire lifetime. Granted, okay. But Apple, for instance, as most of you know, has been sued in federal court for their apparent programming of the phones, the iPhones, to have be obsolete after a couple of years for some reason, slowing down data, battery, or whatever, a bunch of issues that they're claiming. Don't know the outcome of this yet, as of this taping. Planned obsolescence, wanting you to buy a new, new phone. Well, what, about, what if they wanted you to buy a new car? Programmed obsolescence, where, okay, there's that group of joggers. This car is three years old. I think I'll just crash into that, that concrete wall. I could go in the ditch, but no, I'll just, I'll just crash into this wall and make that owner buy another car. Pre-planned obsolescence. It's not like that hasn't been done before. Volkswagen. The cheating scandal a couple of years in 20, it was in 2016, I believe it was, where the car sensed when it was being tested for emissions and decided to change the parameters of the car's operations to pass the test. And as soon as it's not being tested anymore, we just change it. Uh, you, now you got your performance you want, et cetera, et cetera. It's been done before. This is nothing, this is nothing new. Pre-programmed obsolescence. Much easier, easier done in a car. GPS. How many times have you tried using GPS and the damn thing, it just does, doesn't know where you're at. It's sending you down the wrong road. Okay, so you tell your kid to pick, you, pick your kid up at school and it, it goes and looks for the school and whatever reason, interference, it ends up in a cornfield. And your car is calling you, your car is texting you saying, I'm stuck in a cornfield. <laughs> you see, GPS is as shown to be fail, a big failure. And are you going to have to have a, a nationwide, in fact, worldwide network that actually stays communicated all the time, regardless of what the weather is? Be like online all the time. And now we move on to hacking. Well, now wait a minute. That means somebody can hack into your car. Let's say you uh, leased your car and you missed a couple payments. Happens, right? Well, okay. Well, the owner couple states away, the people at the bank, whatever, whoever owns it, they don't have to call repo anymore, repossess the car. We just sit at a computer and, okay, the car is there, let's uh, come back to the bank. You, we're, you're being repossessed. Come here, Hal. And off the car goes. There goes your car. You made missed a payment. Or, let's say you didn't pay a parking ticket. You have some overdue parking tickets. It's been months since you paid, you were supposed to pay it. Eh, somebody in government and shut your car down. Just make it so you can't even use it anymore. Just completely shut it down until you pay up. Pay your parking tickets. Wanted by the police for some reason? Did, didn't show up, show up for court that you maybe didn't even know about? The police could just bring, bring John Smith to, my, to the police station here for me, please. They, tracking you, know where you're at all the time, tracking you. Uh, he's on the road now, just bring him here. Your doors lock, and you're off to the police station. You're under arrest. Interesting. Here's a scenario. You send your, kid, your, you send your car off to go get something. Whatever. Kid from school, let's use that example. On the way, and I've, I was in a taxi one time where we actually did hit, hit a child. Uh, the classic... We did, there was no ball, but the, the child decided to run from between two parked cars, and all of a sudden, bam, they're there. There was no way to stop. A Thomas car won't be able to stop either, necessarily. The reaction time will be quicker, but there's still circumstances where that child's going to get hit. Let's say your car hit that child. Maybe you didn't even know it hit the child, or maybe you thought it was a coyote or something, some other animal, and it continues on, goes to school, pick up your child, comes back home. Then about an hour later, you get a knock on your door. It's the police. You're under arrest for hit and run. Now, wait a minute. I wasn't in the car, but you own the car. Now, if you look at the legislation that's being enacted all over the country, you're going to find limits of liability for the manufacturer. Already in the legislation. Michigan is one of them. Limits of liability of not only the 
manufacturer, also the people that work on the cars, the, the shop, the guy who mechanics, limits of liability. Who's going to be liable? Gee, I wonder who's going to be liable. Now, what if some autonomous vehicle hit your child and they found out who, which car it was, the license plate number was captured or whatever, and you go to sue and you find out it's owned by a corporation? A limited liability corporation that might have that car in a trust on itself where all you can do is basically sue the car and the only damages you could ever get was the car, the wrecked car possibly. That would be the limit of their liability. Because corporations own cars today, right? There's this, this is a sticky wicket. This whole thing with these autonomous vehicles is an extreme sticky wicket, in my opinion. Terrorists load a car with bombs, explosives. Don't even have to have a driver. They just load it up the top, trunk, front, everything. Drive it over to that military base or whatever. Whatever target they decide. By the computer, send, your, send Hal over to the naval base over there. And the car just plows through uh, barricades, roadblocks, people shooting at them. Shooting at what? Shooting at the car. The car continues on, gets close to that aircraft carrier, whatever. Boom. Just a scenario. I'm not saying go blow, blow up aircraft carriers, whatever. Any type of terrorist act. Or a car ramming purposely into crowds of people. And maybe that car, owned by you, was hacked and directed to do this go off on the road and plow into this group of people. In other words, maybe you didn't have a thing to do with it, but you own the car. Well, let's see here. I have a whole lot of notes here and I wanted to keep on track and I sort of have kept on track. Your car could go onto the wrong place. Here's why I believe they're going to have to make drivered cars illegal. Okay, let me back up one more thing before I'm thinking about it. Uh, people who New drivers, at first, will have to be licensed drivers to, to be behind this wheel, watching this thing, nervous as hell. Uh, should I just grab the wheel and take it back? There's going to be more accidents that way because at times where the car possibly could react properly, the human is thinking, oh, this is ridiculous, and it takes the wheel by themselves manually or hits the brakes manually and maybe causes, causes an accident because the car probably could have handled it, but you decided to try to intervene. Okay? This has been demonstrated as well before. The, the skill of the car can actually be greater in most circumstances than the human behind the wheel. And the reaction times are also quicker because it usually takes you almost a second to go hit that brake or to grab the steering wheel and do what you, your decision of your, of your brain decided to do. So uh, they're going to have to basically eliminate it at some, some point because the cars are not safe as, as safe anymore. Uh, because the human intervening will make the car less safe. Now. Also, as far as the human intervening goes, are they going to have to have a licensed driver behind the wheel? At first, probably so. But at some point, if you can go, with, if you don't have to have any driver's license, in other words, if, you, if you, the cars don't even, have, don't even have a steering wheel, that means anybody can in the car, whether you're drunk, that's great, take you, get, take you home from the bar. You could be backseat sleeping, reading a newspaper, whatever. If they are there to control the car, after these cars have been on the road for a number of years and we get used to it, we all have autonomous vehicles basically, does the person who owns the car and sits behind the wheel have to have a driver's license? And if so, okay, they have to have a driver's license. Do they really have the skill to take a circumstance and control it? This is a car you've never maybe driven in your entire life since you owned the car and yet now you're expected to take over the wheel and control it when you don't have any idea what you're doing. See what I'm saying? So, at some point, they won't even have to have licensed drivers because if any, if the car doesn't even have a steering wheel anyway, that means anybody can be in the car at any time and not have control of the car, except maybe an emergency stop button, something like that, and that's it. Now, uh, here's the thing why I believe, that's one of the reasons I believe they're going to have to make the cars fully autonomous without human intervention and make other cars illegal. Here's why the other cars illegal part. This is interesting. And you can all see this happening. Here we have a bunch of cars on the road, autonomous vehicles. And as we know, they're programmed, they won't speed. Most people speed. Most people speed, 10 miles an hour over the limit, whatever. Most people speed. When I do the speed limit on the road, people are passing me all over the place. And it's like, I'm getting in their way. I'm, they're honking at me or whatever. 
I'm doing speed limit. They all want to pass me. Well, now the people, the humans operating cars, will get start getting pretty ticked at these cars that are holding them up, and the general, uh, general, uh, I can't think of the word. People who want to, uh, who are pissed off at these cars. These things shouldn't be on the road. This is a bad thing. Blah blah blah. Some redneck with a pickup truck gonna put a lot of cars in the ditch on purpose. Or okay, sorry, I picked on rednecks. Let's say let's say a car full of teenagers out for their their joy bots, joy botting. I don't know what they're gonna call it. Where they yeah, just take the license plate off and they're gonna go out and they're gonna show a whole bunch of robots who's boss. And they're gonna have a great great time of it. They're gonna pull up beside the car and then quickly swerve and hit their brakes at the same time where it forces that car off in the ditch then you get a text from your car saying hey i'm in the ditch and they go off and do that car after car after car after car there's so many people that are going to be pissed off at these things that at some point they're going to have to say okay now nobody can drive a car now there probably will be some exceptions the only things i can really think of is people that own antiques i have a bunch of antique cars that i was thinking should i sell these things before i before this all comes about will i be able to sell them at all later after this all comes about. And it's not going to be very long. This is going to happen within 10 years. This is going to be a whole lot of these cars going to be on the road and it'll be like almost like the other kind of cars didn't exist with humans behind them. That's my opinion. And the manufacturers are definitely pushing that. And governments are even pushing that, as I just demonstrated. So now we have all these cars with nobody in them. Maybe safer, maybe not. Probably safer. But now you're completely tracked, completely controlled. No privacy. Everything you've ever done can be logged on the computer and, and accessed remotely. Hacked. Steal your car. Whatever. There's so many things that could happen. Uh, what about bad weather? Uh, in said Michigan, they get snow and ice, and right now they're having trouble with that technology. You can be on the road and you can't even see the road. The car, unless there's wires in the road or something, the road is snow covered. Unless it can see the curbs or whatever, it may not know where the, where the road is. Uh, if there's a winter weather advisory and they suggest you don't travel, that means the car just sits there and says, well, they say we can't go on the road, I'm staying right here. Car refuses to move and you can't control it manually. When something does happen to the car, oh, oh, well, like fog, heavy fog. Now, us humans can't see and we have to slow way down. In heavy fog, that's not the case with an autonomous vehicle using radar or other technology to see through that cloud, microwaves, it could go as if there was no clouds there at all. But by clouds, I mean fog. You can go right through that fog without slowing down at all. And then the people crossing the road have to worry about a car coming through a pea soup fog at 60 miles an hour. Heavy rain. Okay, a car doesn't even have to have windshield wipers anymore, or maybe even headlights for that matter. It changes the whole dynamic of what a car actually is. What happens when the computer, something does happen? It loses connection, it uses, it loses the internet connection, or whatever, and doesn't know where it's at. Does it, is it programmed to pull off the side of the road and just sit there and, and Hal gives you a text? I'm sitting here on Highway 32, come get me, or whatever. Computers crash all the time. I suppose they're never gonna crash in a car, right? Crash, right? Uh, it's a sticky wicket. And what about uh, the car refusing to move under so many circumstances? Uh, there's a lot of them you could think of. Weather is one of them. Uh, maybe, maybe it senses that your tires don't have enough air pressure, and so it's saying, "Well, we can't move till this is fixed," or, or whatever. Things you would normally do. Well, I'll just I'll take care of it next time I get by a gas station, or or. Send your car off to, to go get itself fixed. And the mechanic tries to guide your car in. Does the car see this? Does the car understand this? Does the car be able to bring itself in? Or does the mechanic now have to have your code so it can get in the car and bring your car in? Or it, you give it the code so it can go on the computer and put it under his control, which now he has the code. Possibly he could come do something later with it. Of course, they can do that now by copying a key. But you see what I'm talking about here. You're going to have to allow people access to the code to use your car unless you're there to actually physically put it in there. And even if you are physically there and it's a fully autonomous car with a no steering wheel or gas pedal, etc., they're going to have to figure out the car is going to have to do it for it and understand this or something.
to understand what these hand signals mean. Is your car, car going to park in an incorrect place because it couldn't read that sign that may be partly obliterated? And then you get a ticket in the mail so your car was parked here and you can't park here? Roads are going to have to be maintained a lot better. How many times have you been driving on a road and the lane you're in just beating the car to hell? But if you move over the next lane, that lane's good. Or move over just a few inches into, into that same lane and it's much smoother. Is the car going to see all that bad road or is it just going to expect the roads to be perfect? Or is there a huge pothole and maybe the car doesn't see it in time and boom, it's right in the pothole. Of course, that could happen to a human too. The roads are going to have to be better maintained. The lines, the markings on the road are going to be, have to be much better. So the infrastructure is going to have to be improved greatly to deal with these cars. They also have something in the legislation they're producing. You're going to find a word called platooning. I had to look it up to find out what that means. Platooning. What that means is the cars are going to be able to travel much closer to each other, almost like a train where one car is following another, calling another, and they can follow this be a few feet behind the other, whereas you would have to, have to be 500 feet behind or two seconds count or whatever. Now they're going to be able to platoon to where it'd be like a long train, so you're going to be able to fit more cars on the road. That's the benefit they're saying, the platooning part. They're going to be able to fit more cars on the road with having, having in to increase our infrastructure, making roads wider. So you're going to fit a whole lot more cars. You're going to be able to fit 10 times more cars on the road, going at the same speeds. That's the, 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 the promise. What about you and your, your human-driven car, and you want to merge? You're in traffic, you know, heavy traffic, 60 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour, and you got to merge into this thing. And they're platooning. There's no room for you. You just sit there and wait and wait and wait, or what happens? Well, they have technology where the cars talk to each other. So now the cars talk to each other. The cars see that you want to get in, so they slow down a little bit and create a gap so that that car can get in. Uh, the movie Minority Report shows a, a possible scenario there. Uh, if you watch the movie, there's a section with autonomous vehicles. There's other movies, Blade Runner 2, and there's some other movies that have autonomous vehicles shown in the movies. Gives you an idea of some of the possibilities, some of the people that thought these movies up, thought about some things. So the liability concerns, shared cars. The idea is you, you won't have to, you may not even have to have, own a car anymore. You might share one with several people in your block or something to where, because your car sits there in the garage or on the street park for most of the time, right? You can get a, an Uber bot come and pick you up or whatever. Prices will go down. Cars go shoveling people over all the time. It's a potential benefit because maybe you won't even have to own a car. Then that way you'll you'll lease you you'll own leasing rights to a car. Then who's responsible for that car when it hits that child? Who's the owner? The people in that association, that group of people that own the car, are they going to be liable collectively? They've already made it so you can't sue the car manufacturer and the mechanic that works on your car. Who's responsible? Somebody's going to be responsible. Who do you think it's going to be? Let's see, it might arrive at the wrong place because you told it the wrong, the wrong thing. Your car won't budge because of the weather or something. Hal, take me to the grocery store. Sorry, Dave, I can't do that. Uh, I'll leave you alone with one last thing. And if you don't understand this meme, if you don't get it, study the history of Nikola Tesla.